hi, I'm Victoria Hillman. I'm here with the Photographer Academy and we're here today to look at photographing wild orchids in their natural habitat. Uh, we've got uh, common spotted orchids and greater butterfly orchids that we're going to have a look at photographing using natural light and looking at getting some in habitat shots and also getting some closer uh, detailed shots of the actual flowers themselves. So what I'm actually going to use for photographing the orchids is a macro lens because you get some really good detail with that, you can get nice and close, pick out all the little markings on, on the petals and you can be a bit more creative with a macro lens as well because you can widen up the aperture to 2.8 so you can really kind of blur out your foregrounds and backgrounds. Um, I'm actually using it on a full frame sensor camera as well um, just to get that a little bit more detail. I've also got my tripod with me so when I'm doing the inhabitat shots I'll probably do those handheld but as I go in to do closer up shot detail shots of the petals and the details on the flower I'll actually use my tripod to set, set everything up give me the stability and then I can zoom in using the live view to make sure I can manually focus properly on the details that I want to get in focus. So we've got a couple of different um, orchids in this habitat and the first one I'm going to actually just have a look at is the common spot spotted orchid which is this one here. It's probably one of our most common orchids they're found up and down the country um, in grasslands it can actually vary in colour from white right the way through to a darker pink colour. Some of them can actually have no markings on the, on the petals as well. And they're quite easily distinguished from other orchids. They actually have spotted leaves, which is where they get the name from. The other orchid we have here is actually the greater butterfly orchid. And it looks a little bit like a butterfly when it's open. And this is one that we actually find on chalk grasslands. So the area we're actually in at the moment is a chalk grassland. We have as well as these two species of orchid, there's another couple of species of orchid that you can actually find here. And chalk grasslands are really, really good. It's a good place to start looking for orchids. You will find your common spotteds, uh, probably come across some bee orchids if you're lucky, um, greater butterfly orchids, and also pyramidal orchids as well. Now, with the orchids, the habitat is important. and They do need the right soil to grow in and, and also some protection as well. So we're in quite a sheltered area here. So they're not, they're not getting too much wind or, or direct sun. And they're, they're quite tall. Sometimes they can be really small. Sometimes they can be really big. A lot of it does hugely depend on the, on the weather conditions leading up to when they're coming into flower. So with, I mentioned the bee orchids. Um, if you're lucky and you can find some bee orchids, um, they're, they're absolutely beautiful flowers but they will actually take about eight years to flower and some of them will only flower once in their lifetime so if you do come across one you get a chance to photograph it you know to really just go to town on it and really enjoy it but be careful when you're photographing that you don't damage any of the area around it and that really goes for any of the orchids you, you should just be really careful and mindful of the habitats and try and photograph them in the habitat rather than gardening around them. I'm actually going to start off uh, shooting some of these orchids in their habitat and I'm going to start off with an aperture of 2.8 and I'm actually going to be shooting some orchids just over here to my left but I'm going to be shooting them through the grass to get a real sense of, of being in the habitat with them. So I'm having a look on the back of the camera at what I've got, whether I need to change my aperture, my positioning and with these, I'm actually uh, choosing to shoot in a portrait orientation because the flowers themselves are actually quite tall and thin. So rather than doing it in a landscape, they actually lend themselves very well to portrait photos. And where I've got quite a few together here, I'm actually using the ones in the background out of focus to create a nice purple hue for the one that I'm shooting in the foreground. And I'm checking on the back of the camera as I shoot as well, which is really important. The, the orchids are not gonna get up and run away, so you've got the time to sit there and have a look at the images on the back to see if you've, if you've got the right composition, the right angle, the right exposure. So I've actually got uh, the great butterfly orchid here as well, which I'm gonna, which I'm gonna shoot. And I've got a nice backdrop of grass, brambles, and other leaves. So this should produce a nice green background to bring out the flowers. 
But I think we need to go for a slightly smaller aperture to get more detail in. What's quite nice sometimes is once you've got a few nice in habitat shots of the orchid, is to actually shoot through your foliage to see if you can get some more, more artistic images of them. And one thing you'll notice is I'm actually using purely natural light. We've actually got quite a soft diffuse light today, which is, is really nice for photographing the orchids because you don't get any harsh shadows. And I'm not, use, I'm not using any flash or any fill in light. I'm just using what's there. Another angle you can actually go for with the common spotted orchids is try and shoot down on them. You can get some quite nice details in the petal if you shoot at more of a downward angle. So as you can see, I'm not really moving myself around that much. I'm trying not to disturb the habitat too much. Well, quite a few orchids around me, so I'm just looking at different angles I can get without actually moving around too much. So what I'm going to have a look at now is actually trying to go in and get a little bit more detailed shot of some of the petals. As particularly with the common spotted orchids, they actually have some beautiful markings on them. And a lot of them can be very different. I've had a good look around here. I've taken lots of different photographs of these orchids. So what I'm actually going to do now is go and find an orchid that I can set my camera up and actually really get in close and pick out those details of the petal. And for that, I'm actually going to set up on a tripod so I can use the live view on the back of my camera, zoom in on that and manually focus to make sure I can pinpoint exactly where I want the bits of my image to be in focus. OK, so I'm all set up on the tripod now with a common spotted orchid right in front of me here. And you can notice I'm actually a little bit closer to it this time. And that's because I just want to go in on the details of the, of the petals. So i am actually got my live view on and I'm using the live view just to have a look. Get myself positioned just right. And I'm actually manually focusing these. So on the live view, I've actually zoomed in to five times so that I can make sure I get the patterns on the petals completely in focus. Having a quick check. So I'm going to see if I can get a little bit closer. So all macro lenses actually have a minimum focusing distance. And if you get with inside that minimum focusing distance, it actually won't focus. So it's just something to bear in mind. If you want to get a little bit closer, the best way to do it is actually just creep in ever so slowly and use your manual focus to see if you can actually get it to focus. And just exploring some different possibilities, some different angles. I'm just going to see if I can get a little bit closer again. I'm being very, very careful as I move my tripod not to disturb anything. And one thing you'll notice is everything that I'm shooting, it's completely natural. It's completely, I'm not using anything to hold the plants in place. I'm just working with what I've got. And on windy days, it can be really tricky. But you can just view it as a bit more of a challenge. And I'm happy with that shot, so I think we'll leave it at that for these common spotted orchids. Okay, so we have found a me orchid, and this one's actually really small, so for this one I'm actually not even going to attempt using a tripod. I'm actually just going to shoot laying on the ground using my arms as stability rather than the tripod.
So I've actually, from this angle, I've actually got a really nice clean shot of the flower. Nothing distracting in the background at all. With the bee orchid, it actually gets its name because it looks like a bee. And that is, the whole point of that is to attract bees to it, to pollinate it. So now I've gone front on, I'm going to carefully move round and actually see if I can get a nice shot from the side. With bee orchids, they actually have several flowers that come up and anywhere between four upwards and as they go up, so you can see the bottom one there and you can see the next one up just starting to open, they actually alternate on the way up to give enough space for bees to come in. And if you can find one that's fully in flower, if you actually shoot down on it, you can get a really nice perspective and a really nice um, picture of all the different colours and textures shooting straight down. So I think we're pretty much done with this one now. We'll let it soak up some sun and hopefully those other flowers will open up soon. Okay, so we finished our orchid photography. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching it and maybe picking up a few tips along the way. A few crucial tips to take away with you is do your research. So find your orchids, find good habitats for them. And then probably the most important one is take your time. The orchids aren't going to go anywhere. So once you've found one, set yourself up. Take your time with getting the focus right, getting the composition right and try different compositions as well. So shoot it nice and close up to get those beautiful textures and colours, but then take a step back and actually shoot it in its wider environment, showing all the other plants and that that it has around it, around it. So I hope you've enjoyed it and good luck trying out some orchid photography. Thank you. Mm -hmm.